welcome to Marketing Matters, the show where we explore all things marketing and uncover those things that matter for you and your success. I'm your host, Denise Millay, and my hope and mission is to make marketing and technology useful without jargon, complexity, or confusion so that you can grow your business, expand your impact in the world, and build your best life. Today's episode is called Search Marketing. We're talking about search marketing and where it fits in your overall marketing plan. What is it and where it fits in your overall marketing plan. So let's get going. As we begin, I want to share a quote with you from Joan Baez. We all know the wonderful folk singer, Joan Baez. As long as one keeps searching, the answers come. And I want you to think about this as we go forward, because I, I want you to think about your audience and how they're looking for their answers and they're searching and searching. And you want to make sure that you enter into that process to help them find their answers. So what is search marketing, right? And why does it matter? Well, I want to say that we know the internet, uh, the online world, everything is connected right? Everything is, um, everything we do as entrepreneurs, as business owners, is connected in some way to the other things, right? So if we do social media, our social media points back to our website. If we have a website, it's accessible by all different pathways that we present out there, right? It's all connected. But we don't know where our people are coming from. So we don't know where to focus our energy. We don't know if social media is the place. We try and we try to connect with our audience there. We look for engagement. We look to start conversations. Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter even, Reddit for some people or YouTube. They all have different types of people that come to them and different reasons they show up. And we do our best to put whatever fits for our business, whatever we do, onto the platform where we think our people are, right? I mean, that's the whole goal is to reach our people with our messages and to try to engage them so that we could do business with them, right? So if you think about social media, it's enormous. It's enormous. Millions and millions of people are can access those platforms and you don't have to work too hard to get them. You know, as long as your message is there, you have to just engage with them and keep putting your stuff out there and it gets spread and shared and posted and it's out there forever. And hopefully you get those people to come to your website or to whatever your offering is, read your blog, read your, listen to your podcast, see your show like this one. Um, and we do all this to engage with them, right? So all those connections are out there. But the one thing that we have to think about is those connections, that internet can be thought of as a forest. The internet is a forest made up of a bazillion trees all over the planet, right? How are your people going to find you in that forest? You have all the pieces out there. You have a bazillion trees, right? You're planting them every day with your content and with your videos and with your social medias and podcasts. And you spend hours and hours and hours building all this content to try to help people, to try to engage with them. Well, we don't know where they're coming from. We're not sure which platform we should focus on, right? But we're just throwing things into the forest, you know? And I want you to think, is your business lost in the forest? Because, you know, if they can't find you, they can't do business with you. So our goal is to help people find us, right? Help people know that we're there. And yes, you could go to Facebook and say, I'm engaging with the people on Facebook. And so they're going to know how to find me. I'm going to go to Instagram and they're going to know how to find me. I'm going to go to YouTube and they're going to know how to find me. That's a lot of work. And you're going from place to place to place to place to try to hopes of engaging with the right people at the right time 
to come and see you, but you're giving it to them and you don't even know if they're there to find a solution at that point. They could just be scrolling because they want to see cat videos on YouTube or they're on Instagram and they want to see the reels that their friends are creating because they're hilarious and they want to entertain themselves or they're first thing in the morning with their cup of coffee and they're reading their email or they're reading their, they're scrolling through Instagram to see what got posted that morning, right? They're not specifically going there for an answer, right? We're expecting or hoping that they're going to see what we present to them and think, wow, that sounds really great. I want to find out more. So we're hoping to interrupt their flow of something else they were doing and engage them for marketing. And that is not necessarily the easiest thing to do. Their intent when they come to social media is not necessarily to be a buying experience. I know it isn't for me. If I'm going to Twitter, I'm reading what people have to say. I'm there for a topic that I want to learn more about. If I go to Facebook, I'm catching up on all my peers and my partners and and I'm randomly looking at things to see what I can find out, right? I'm not necessarily there to look for a solution. But I'll tell you there is one place that people go for solutions, and that's search engines. That's primarily why people go to them. That is their intent. They plan to go there to find an answer. Now, are the questions they ask always looking for a buying situation? Not necessarily, but they're looking for information. They're looking for answers to questions. So we already know when they get there that they're looking for an answer. So we know what the mindset is of the person we're talking to at that moment. And that is gold. That is something that we often don't see in the online world because we're so hidden from who's on the other side of the conversation, right? So we don't always know. We have to make estimated guesses about where they are and what they're doing, right? So in search engine and search marketing, we know why people sat down most of the time. And it's for an answer. Now that answer could be, you know, how many knees does an elephant have? Or that answer could be, how do I make more money for my business? That answer or question could be, how do I get more exposure to sell my products? It could be so many different things, but most often it's related to action-oriented things that you can try to provide an answer to. So that is why search marketing matters. Search marketing matters because you're out there in the forest and we want your likely customer to come away with your tree. We want them to find the perfect tree for themselves, tie it on top of their car and take it home with them for the holidays. That's what our goal is with search marketing. And I love that picture, so I had to include it. So. You want to be included. You want to be included in search marketing, even if you don't have a search marketing big creative plan that you're going to have. You just want what you create to be included. And that is called organic results. Those are things that Google puts into its vault, its catalog of information. And when somebody asks a question, they serve up results. And for organic content, you're not paying anything for this. This is just setting things on your content so that Google knows what it is when they see it and read it and they put it into their catalog so that you're available as a result. So it's really the simple, it's the very beginning, make sure you're included, right? And we do this, you know, because we, we know that they're out there searching, right? We know that our people that we want to connect with are looking for an answer because those are the ones you want to serve. Those are the ones with an issue, with a problem, with an information gap that you are there to help them with. And that is your reason to be in business. So we want to make sure we take advantage of this platform that let me tell you, Google after uh, 2021 and into 2022, like the middle of 2022, the statistics were that there were 8.6 billion searches occurring every day. That, my friends, is an enormous number of people visiting this one platform looking for answers. And that equate, they said the study said that 
three, the average adult visits Google.com three times a day. I don't know about you, but there are very few places I go three times a day. So it's the gold standard for search. It's the place where the entire globe is going to look for things. And yes, there are other search engines out there, but they're very small audiences compared to Google. So today, in today's terms, Google is the place that you need to focus your energy on to begin to make sure you're included, okay? So where do we begin? The first thing we want to know is what are they looking for? It's not what you have. The first question is what you have and what you're giving, what the benefits of it are. It's what are they looking for? We want to know what's on their mind <clears throat> at this point. We want to know what's going to be useful to them and what questions they are asking. And those are the key to getting our content to match up to what they're asking questions about, right? Because they're speaking into their phones with a question, they're typing something into a search bar, right? So they're, they have specific things that they're equating to their issue. You want to figure out what those are and try different things to see if you can connect what you have to them so they'll come and visit you and see what you have to offer that can help them. So that's where we begin. And so you want to prepare for this. Prepare for search by doing these few simple steps. And these steps are going to help you get ready So you're going to research their needs. You are going to use the language of your people, those people that you're researching, that you think are your ideal audience, your ideal customer. You're going to do the research. You're going to figure out what's keeping them up at night. What are the questions? What are their needs? Do they need more income in their business? Do they need more leads so that they can sell their own products? Are they looking for technology that you have that you can help with and serve them that way? Those are the things you have to understand. Not necessarily only what you have. It's from their perspective that you need to focus on. And then you're going to find those words that they're going to use when they go and sit down at Google or they use their phones and do a voice search. You're going to think about what terms do they use to refer to what you do so for an example, I could call myself a website builder. Is that what my people are going to say? I don't think so. They're going to ask for a small business website. They might say website designer because that's a cons common thing that people say. Are they going to look for findability, which is what I call this exercise we're going through? No, they might look for search engine optimization, which is the words that's out there in the ether about search, which I don't agree with, but that's the word they're going to use. So I'm going to make sure I use that word in some of the things that I write so I can appeal to the person who's looking for a solution. I mean, I want the world to understand that findability is the first step in your search engine marketing journey. You have to be included before you can optimize your inclusion. So optimization is trying to get your up on the page, higher, to answer more questions, to get more people to click on you. Well, you have to be there first before you can optimize that. So what I'm talking about in search marketing and findability is the first step, the entree that everybody has to do to make sure they're included. So these three things to prepare for search marketing, you're going to research what they're talking about, how they're using it, what their language is around it, and you're going to find the words that, and phrases you want to focus on and include those in your content, include those in your blogs, include those in your writing, in your website pages, in your podcasts, so that they can connect with you. So you're connecting the vault and catalog of information that Google has that's indexed on words and phrases and make sure you use them so when someone puts those into Google, you can be a result for them. Now, a keyword, which is what a lot of people talk about, these search words that I call them, 
is a word that serves as a key to a code or a cipher. It's a significant or descriptive word, and it's a word used as a reference point for finding other words or information. So a key word in the terms of search is what your person is using, their code for what they're looking for. Think of it that way. Think of it as a significant thing, not a generic term. Try to get it as, as focused as you can. And I like to use my red sneakers example. And so imagine you're looking for new sneakers and you just type the word sneakers into google.com. How many results do you think you'll get back? Millions, 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 right? If you're selling sneakers and you um, want to compete in that market, well, just to use the word sneakers in your content is going to get you thrown in with the millions of other people. Well, say I'm really searching for these sneakers I saw in a magazine or I saw online. They were red, they had purple laces, they had black soles, and they were used for running. Okay, so if I'm searching for those sneakers and I don't remember the maker of them, I'm going to type in red sneakers, purple laces, black soles. Okay, so now if I'm the seller of those sneakers, I should make sure that those words are in my content so they are a match. So that Google will know to serve up my sneakers to this person because they asked a specific question about red sneakers with purple laces and black soles. That sounds really ugly, but... I'm just making it up. So that's what keywords really are. They're not just a single word. They could be a phrase. They could be a question. And it's and more specific you can make it the better so that you stand out and you can get the people that specifically are matching exactly what you have to give. Because the audience is huge. There are millions and millions and millions of people, 8.6 billion searching every day, every searches, right? So you couldn't handle working for 8.6 billion. You can only handle so many in a day. So try to be as specific to speak to those people that are a perfect match for you and use your language that matches their language and try to come to a, uh, a meeting of the minds, let's say. So you'll find your ideal client, they'll find their ideal solution, and together you will make great business. Okay, so keywords are ideas and topics that define what your content is about. They're the words or phrases that searchers enter into search engines. So steps to take to be included. Once you have your words, once you have your phrases, your questions, you want to use these in the titles of whatever you create, the page descriptions, the headlines that are the biggest text, the biggest font, the most important words on the page, and then every image you use has a tag that you can put something in. Now let's talk about web pages. Web pages, no matter what builder you have, these things are available as a title for each page, a description, 150 characters and the title actually becomes the link in Google search results. So it's actually what people will see on the page and the first 150 characters will be right underneath it. So make those words count. Make them match what those people are asking for in English of course in, in, a, in a complete sentence or a complete question or a catchy hook title whatever that speaks to what they're looking for and use the description to do a further description of the title of those words and how you're going to help them. And don't be repetitive with the words. Use synonyms, things that are equal and, and the same. Um, you want to add, actually provide clear, helpful, useful content for them. And you want Google to know that you have clear, helpful content. This isn't spammy stuff that you're just repeating the same words so they'll come and visit you. Once they get there, they need something good to read or to consume. So make sure that you have good content for them to, to take on and take in, okay? So the titles and descriptions, and then every page, every blog post, every podcast has one headline on it that's the biggest thing on the page. Your words or phrases or questions should be reworded and put into that space as well. 
because that tells Google how important those words are to the rest of the content. Now, an image tag is a specialty thing that's for web pages. And sometimes in Shopify stores, you'll have this if you have a picture of your product, you have a tag. Those were intended for screen readers, for people who are visually impaired and they can't see, obviously, the images we include with our content. So they have a reader that reads the screen for them. And when they encounter an image, they read what's in this, this title for the image to tell them what is in the picture. So you should tell them what's in your picture, but try to relate it back to your phrase or your keyword. So don't just stuff it with things that don't matter because if someone that's visually impaired encounters that tag, you want it to make sense for them. You want it to be provided in context for them so they understand what you're showing through it. But you could take that as an opportunity to focus on your main theme, your main idea for the page or the piece of content you've created. Now, if you do these four things for everything you create, you will be along the first step to get yourself included in Google. And that is the goal of what we're doing here, is we want you to be included in search. We want your tree in the forest to be found and tied on top of the car so that they can go home with your solution. So thanks so much. I'm, I'm hoping this helped you today. I have a workshop that I've created called The Simple Ways to Make Yourself Findable. I go more into depth on this topic, how Google record your content, steps to make sure info is accurate, it's readable by search engines, and the ways to help potential customers and clients find your blogs, your podcasts, your social media and website. We do demonstrations of tools you can use, there's tracking spreadsheets so you can keep track of your progress and, and your results. If you're interested, please go to dmalay.com slash simple ways, S-I-M-P-L-E-W-A-Y-S. And thank you. I'm so glad you could join me for this episode of Marketing Matters. I know how precious your time is. And my hope is you came away from this episode with some nuggets you can apply to your business. My aim is to provide clear, useful information for you so that you can have a thriving business, amazing relationships with your customers and clients. And as always, if you have any questions, please put a post on my Facebook page, Marketing Matters. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.